Previously on Quest Laid Plans. You see this swarm of birds rushing in through the window, and you hear a shattering sound as all the other windows are besieged by a swarm of these little birds. This is so bad, immediately. <laughs> you see them start to converge and form one large swarm, almost like moving as one large creature. And the creature is too tall for this tiny halfling house, and so it's bent over and it's kind of in a quadrupede form. It has a very long stooped over neck and a beak that is about three or four times longer than the diameter of its head and very sharp. Is this like if a pterodactyl was on its like front wings? Yeah. I, will, I don't say like a pterodactyl, but like some sort of like pterodon situation. This is one of those dinosaurs that we were talking about. It's like a winged one, like a really old, strong, big bird. This bird needs to be out of this house. One of the swarms is going to come back at Naraya in another attempt to do some pecking. Rune shield. You have to reroll 22. You know what? Second chance. You gotta reroll again. A 17? You're putting up a good fight, but these birds are relentless. In a panic, Esther misty steps outside of the house. I really want to just try polymorphing the big bird. Into one little bird, please God! Or maybe no birds. Hey. It needs to make a DC 16 wisdom save. It got a 16. <sighs> Naraya, you are engulfed by these birds. You are now blinded, deafened, and restrained, and you cannot breathe. Dozens more birds fly in through the broken windows and through the open door and join it. Should we keep just pushing it out or just try to kill it in here? I think we need to disable this big one somehow because it's generating more birds and that's no good. I think I might have a way to do that. Okay, I'm gonna hit it then. Naraya, you summon all of your rogue dexterity to dodge in between these like infinitesimal cracks between birds. I'm going to misty step to the top of just any cabinet that is in this room and puts me above the big bird. So I'm gonna say that you are on top of a cuckoo clock as psychological warfare. Take that mother cluckers. It once again lets out a primal pterodon scream. It almost looks for a moment like it's tearing in half. And now there is no big bird, it is four swarms. Okay. Then I use my whole movement to get out the door. That was that was the move. That was that was cool. You are so distracted seeing Kit absolutely bolt out of the room that all of a sudden, one second you see him bolt and the next you see nothing but birds and you hear nothing but birds and you can breathe nothing but birds. <laughs> Y'all just see just a big blue being just emerge from this swarm of birds and just ow, 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 ow. Punch it in the face, Windswip! So to recap, in the space of six seconds, Windswip went from being completely engulfed and suffocated by birds to like tripling in size, punching a hole in the ceiling, and then squashing a bunch of the birds and some clothes. Excellent turn. I am going to cast Wind Wall as a barrier between the big bird and the swarms and the birds coming, and then with me and Brex and Naraya and Windswip on the other side. And it cuts just like so close. This You could like feel the wind blowing through your eyelashes as it goes past, and you can see the shadows of birds flying against it, but mostly all you can hear is wind now. Welcome to Quest Laid Plans, the podcast that asks the question, can an old party learn new tricks? I am Megan Kelleher, your dungeon master, and with me are my MySpace top five. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, hi, my name is Tom. No, uh, sorry. Uh, my name is um, <laughs> my name is Maya Esming, and I play Winston Palm, uh, Air Genazi Gnome. 
Uh, hi everyone, I'm Phil Arevalo. I play Kit Marpola, Water Genasi Monk, and Kit did, does not have a MySpace. He clearly has a Zanga. <laughs> <laughs> no! Another millennial joke! <laughs> Hello, I am Jesse B. Kohler, playing a human boy, a golden boy, a just honored and touched boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Vivian's sorcerer. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Hathaway, playing Avalini Every Skywatcher, and um, as a as a zillennial, I actually was never on MySpace. Fuck me. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Spending too much time to make my HTML the perfect mix of black and hot pink, I am Nedmarie Vocheva, and I play the halfling wizard rogue Naraya Winswarren. Anyway, here's Windwall. <laughs> <laughs> you open someone's yeah, MySpace yeah. page and the song did auto please is oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's just so loud. <laughs> It says, when the wall appears, each creature within its area must make a strength saving throw. So I'm gonna say that because it's a foot thick, that I've had it so at least like some of that foot is in contact with the swarm and the quadruped. Yeah, I'm gonna say you can get all of them. If you can make it bendy, then sure. Hell yeah. So they have to make a strength saving throw and my... Spell save DC is a 16. That's some badass airbending shit right there. The swarm nearest to Windswip fails. Amazing. The oh, yeah. big guy fails. Yes. Yeah, hell yeah. Actually, oh, they all fail. Yeah. They all fail. Yes. Okay, the first swarm takes 14 damage. Is that halved or? No, that's full. Because they all failed, right? They did, but they're still all resistant to bludgeoning damage. Okay, so the first one takes seven then. The second one takes six. And the third, the big guy takes six as well. And small or smaller flying creatures or objects can't pass through the wall. <laughs> 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 so the swarms cannot get through the wall. Oh my god! Amazing. Yeah, you see the swarm. You see the shadow of the swarms coming up against it, like when a bird flies up against a shut window oh. and doesn't fly through it as these ones did. You know, a normal bird. After I throw up this wind wall, I shout to everyone, do we want to get out of the house if we just all use this wall to retreat and then we can kind of form up together where we have more space? Yeah, I, I, I think y'all need to get out here. <laughs> it yeah. uh, seems bad in there. Esther's face is in the ground. <laughs> So here's the tea on that. Are you about to move through the wind wall? Um, are the birds, the birds were coming in through the door or were they trying to leave through the door? Basically what I will say is that you have unfettered access to the jagged broken windows. I, you're going to need to make some checks to get through those without getting cut by the glass. You would have to move through the wind wall to get out the door. Okay. So Kit and Esther are outside. Mm -hmm. Naraya's sitting on top of a clock. I can get down <laughs> very easily, though. If that's the door at the bottom with the outside, where where birds, Megan? Where where birds? <laughs> where wall? I'm gonna do you one better and do it myself. Okay. Because it's probably easier than explaining. I too have the bad uh, visualizing brain. I just know the birds initially came through the window that Naraya opened. Yeah. Yeah, remember that, Naraya? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was a messenger. I, I, I was expecting the bird to tell me something. At the very, like, at the worst case scenario, I was expecting, like, this. A, 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 very, a very good druid to have been bird, but it was not. We're all rusty anyway. It's yeah. okay. It's fine. I didn't know birds can be monsters. <laughs> <laughs> birds are supposed to only be friend. Everything's a monster. I, as a human person and a player, really fucking love birds. And this is very upsetting <laughs> to me. <laughs> this entire situation. Very upsetting. 
My, my best friend and roommate is uh, terrified of birds, and so when I recapped for her what is going down, she's like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. We, <laughs> are we going to have to have a content warning for this? <laughs> content warning birds. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, trying to figure out how large Winswip is going to get out of here. Yep, <laughs> large Winswip. Large exclamation mark, Winswip. I think you just got a Kool-Aid yeah. banner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's because that's the thing. Like, she could get small and probably fit through the window window no, no, better, no. but she has advantage please, on strength checks large. as a giant. So, basically, the dilemma at the moment is like everything that is bad is contained within the wind wall. The wind wall also blocks you from the door, and it would be like a little dangerous to try and get out the broken windows. So. Okay. So, um, I think I back up and move closer to one of the windows down on the south wall of the house. Sure. And just take my movement to get to the window. I'm not going to break it or do anything yet. I'm just backing up away from the wind wall. It's broken, so... The window is broken? All the windows are broken and they're all shattered. So it would... Getting through it would be less of a matter of, like, having to break it and more a matter of having to, like, finesse your way through while taking minimal slicing damage. Okay. Would I need to make a check or something? Would that take an action to climb through the window? I think it would probably take double movement. Okay. Then I, I get myself up to a window and then I'll just... I'll stay there and that'll be my turn. So it is now the Mega Bird's turn once again. It is inside the wind wall. The quadruped is larger, is large enough that it can move through the wind wall. So I believe that what it's gonna do is bust out of the wind wall, set its sights on you, Aveline, and take a swipe at you with each of its wings. <sighs> okay. This is how we die in a cabin surrounded by birds. <laughs> Okay, the first one is 21 to hit. Does a 16 hit you with your plus one AC? Yeah, even with the plus one, I uh, both of those hit. Okay, so both of those are going to hit. Let me roll damage. Okay, so it's going to be t- total 21 bludgeoning damage, and then I'm going to roll the necrotic. Jesus. But you were not ready. And then additional uh, 17 Jesus necrotic Jesus Christ. Damage. Oh, oh my how God. How are you doing? God. Um, hang on, I have to do math. You weren't hit before, though, right? No, but I've gone from 57 down to 19 HP. Okay, so first thing you have to do is make a constitution saving throw. Oh, that's a 17 on the die, so that is a 19. So I save. All right, so you feel a wave of nausea pass through you as this, as the wings kind of hit you with a force that is worldly and otherworldly, but it passes very quickly and you manage to get it under control. The next thing is you want to make a concentration check on that wind wall. I've never I've never had to roll for concentration before, so 15 on the die, so that's a 17. Half of 39 is more than, more than 17. Yeah, almost, but not quite as it gets you. Uh, oh, as that moment that you have the nausea go through you, it's just a moment before you regain yourself. But when you kind of come to from that dizzy spell again, you realize the wind wall has to. Oh my god. What kind of crazy ass damage is this thing? Like, how is it yeah. getting all that? All right, and. Fuck. <laughs> Bonus act. You. No. <laughs> what the fuck? No. no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm so sorry, Aveline. I need you to now make me a DC 17 deck save. A lot why of saving happening. Why are you trying to kill Aveline? <sighs> why? It's my job. Why are none of these wisdom saves? <laughs> Just throwing that out there. It doesn't have any riddles in its back pocket for you. I'm sorry. What did that need to be? 17. Mm, that's a 10. Fuck. So. Oh, you're swarmed. The second that the wind wall comes down, you see the swarms kind of break free and you see the giant quadruped take a step towards you and another step towards you. And then you are inside of it and you are swarmed and engulfed by the large quadruped. Ah! So you are blinded, deafened and restrained. By the big boy. Oh, by the big boy. Oh no. Horrible. It's strange. It, you feel very strange, Aveline, inside of it because at first you're engulfed by this massive creature and then you feel like the pressure bearing down on you lessens and is still claustrophobic and terrible. But from the outside, what we see is that the quadrupedal bird that is engulfing Aveline actually shoots out another swarm. And so now... We are up to four swarms and no giant quadrupede. One of the swarms is on Avalon. So it's it's like the big one did the splitting thing again. 
Yeah, it did. Basically, okay. like from it's it's like it's split in half, and one of the halves got custody <laughs> of Adeline. God, oh, Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm a I'm a child of divorce, staying spending the weekend with my least oh, favorite God. parent. <laughs> My least favorite pairing, oh a swarm God. of birds. <laughs> listen, uh, I am and, families, and am I right? Listen, not to speak from personal experience, but sometimes the swarm of birds would have been preferable. Oh, God. Damn, and with that, we will go to Kit. <laughs> okay. Um, Don't talk hope my into prone. taking psychic damage, too. <laughs> let, listen, firstly, I'm resistant to psychic damage. Secondly, <laughs> uh, if my dad is ever listening to this podcast... Fuck you, Graham. <laughs> fuck you, Graham. Yeah, fuck you, Graham. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, Graham, get fucked. You, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's, okay. uh, let's, let's motor. So, all right. Um, I can see through the windows. I'm going to stay outside. Uh, and I, what I'm going to Good do choice. is I, I'm going to... I'm switching out to my sling. And I'm just <laughs> going to try to bean... Okay. So, is there a swarm such that if I moved it five feet, someone would get an opportunity attack? Yes like any of them. All right, I'm going to take two swing attacks like through the window to try to move a swarm so that Rex gets an opportunity attack. Okay. Uh, does a 16 hit? No. Oh, fuck. Okay, then I'm going to spend one key point to make that 16 and 18. Nice, nice. That will, that will make Okay, so that yeah. will hit, so I'm going to use focused aim. Oh, awesome. Okay, then I'm going to use my bonus action to Kensei shot to add a 1d4 to that as well. So it moves five feet and will incur an opportunity attack from Brex. Okay. And it takes three bludgeoning damage. That's already had. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm going to roll the Brex opportunity attack. No. Uh, okay, uh, Brex is going to get in three also. Three damage also. Oh my god. Uh... Wow. Yeah, you, it's hard to it's hard to poke a moving target, but uh, you know Brex does their best. And that's my turn. All right, Esther, it's your turn. Okay. Um, where are the four swarms? So one of them is around Aveline, near the window mm -hmm. that is like on the south wall, the left window. One of them is up next to Brex. So those two are kind of next to each other, or no? Yeah, and then one of them is up against Windswip, and one of them is by the door. Okay, I am going to, I would like to Misty Step sort of next to Brex. Okay. And then I'm going to, well, for, before Esther does that, he turns to Kit and says, time to fight stupid with stupid. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Misty Step <laughs> next to Brex. And is gonna cast oh, no. um, Agazar Scorcher. Um, you can't yeah. cast two spells in one round. Oh right, 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 right. Oh shit! I totally forgot about that. Sorry. Um, I mean, the wind wall is down, yeah. So couldn't couldn't you just like use your movement to get in? Yeah, I could. Okay, so run in. Well, prone, so stand. So I then have 15 feet left. I'm really just trying to land in a spot that I could send a, like, that I could try to get two swarms or as many as possible in the line of this fire. So I think there's a world in which you could fire it and aim it slightly to the left of the cuckoo clock and get the one by the door and the one that is fighting Brax without getting the others. Cool. So I'm lighting a flame in a house. That's what I'm going to do. So each creature in the line, which I think is just the swarms, has to make a dex saving throw of uh, 15. Okay. They both make it. Okay. So that's uh, 17 from the dice, and then plus four from my uh, dragon ancestry, because I cast a fire spell. So that's 21 uh, half. So 10? Yes. Okay, so they will each take 10. And then... So I'm, I'm at the door, right? I'm in the doorway. Watching oh. <laughs> I'll keep fighting on my own. Oh, Robin, God. don't sue us. Okay. Um, okay, that's that'll be uh... great. All right, so you run up to the doorway, shoot a line of blazing fire at exactly the right angle so that it weaves between Brex and the cuckoo clock on which Naraya is perched and manages to scorch two of the swarms. And once again, it is very much like a firebird bird barbecue <laughs> situation. 
this point, uh, Kit, you're still outside? I'm still outside. You witness once again more birds brushing past. God. You're already pr- Fucking damn it. Okay. You are, we are how, not, you're already prone, right? We're not fighting this. I, I had to No, I, yeah, I had to get we, up. We yeah. can't. <laughs> you did get up? Yeah, okay, I, I so, had to get up. Okay, cool. We so have to unique. just run? Make yeah. a DC yep, 17 yep, 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 yep. check. I have plan. I have plan. Yes. Kind of. Uh, I'm, uh, I save. I got a 19. Okay, so you manage. Uh, you do get an attack of opportunity on these new birds. Thank God. Okay. Kill the birds. That is a 19 to hit. Oh, yeah. That will hit. Uh, and that is seven bludgeoning damage. Okay. Is that already half? Uh, no. Damn oh, it. duh. This resistance is killing us. It's <laughs> very, very bad. Very bad yeah. for Monk Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is bad for me, too. <laughs> Kit, you managed to stay on your feet and make an attack with what do you use your whip or your what do you use? No, I use my uh, I use my club. <laughs> I'm just like I'm just like flailing wildly. Yeah, you managed to get three birds, and you realize as you're swinging around that it's fewer birds. And then you think maybe last time it might have been fewer birds too. You feel like it's a diminishing return on the birds, and so taking out three of them actually that's like a third of the birds. So. The ones that remain go in the window. What you saw on the inside is you saw the two swarms that were just damaged by fire come together, form a very scorched and burned and bad looking quadruped once more, which then calls out for more birds. And that'll be all of So it's one quadruped, legendary action. two swarms. Yes, correct. That is that. Okay, it is now Brex's turn. Brex is going to attack the quadruped, quadruped, large boy. And it's going, he's just going to take two attacks with Bedlam. It's not going to hit. That one is going to hit. Okay, that's going to be six piercing damage. This thing, it, as it, as it, even as it's just getting poked by this like magical, very, very thin, needly sword, it cries out as some of, basically most of the new birds that just joined it are now just fried up into a shadow once again. Uh, it is not looking great at this point. It, you realize that it's it's a much less dense bird than it used to be. In its large form, you can really see that it's just like a couple dozen and not massive, massive, massive amounts. It is now Winswip's turn again. Winswip is going to use, is there still a swarm next to, next to her? Or was that one of the burnt swarms that got swept up? That was not one of the burnt swarms. She's going to cast with her bonus action Zephyr Strike, which is the same thing that she used back on the uh, battlefield against the big worm, which is that she know does not provoke opportunity attacks. That's the first part of it. And the second part is that when she tries to attack something, she'll get an extra 30 feet of movement. So Amazing. Nice. Wind swips up, her kind of air genasi wind swips up, and she's going to try to attack the swarm that is next to her, for starters. And not 20. Oh. Woo! Oh. Yes! <laughs> that was it. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, great. So it's going to take whatever this number is because it takes half of bludgeoning, but that's fine. There's an eight points of bludgeoning damage from her warhammer. And what the hell? She'll attack it again. She will not make that one. But, oh wait, with that crit, she also gets an extra D8 of force damage. So, Ooh. Oh, yeah. uh, an extra three points of force damage. Are you, are you with me? There's more, I have more things to do, but are you with me? <laughs> I'm with you, so that's 11 points so far. Great. Okay, so she's going to now run away from that swarm and head for wherever Aveline is. In another swarm. <laughs> In another swarm. Now this is the part where I need your help here. If she were to action surge, could she grab Aveline out of this swarm as an action? I'm gonna say you can, you can try. <laughs> okay. I want to allow it because it's cool. Yeah, you, if you, with your gigantic fucking hand, yeah, I think it would be, um, I think it would be a dexterity check to try and get something out of something else with a big hand. Dexterity, not strength. <laughs> not strength. Can I just muscle my way through this worm? Okay, I'll, I'll let you do strength. Thank you. Um, all right, so she's going to do that. Action surge, reach in with her big old mitt, try to just yank Aveline out. I'm going to say DC 17 because that's what the others are. Okay. Great. I get a plus two, plus seven, 20, 24. Uh, 
Okay. Great. Win, so she wins with. She pulls Aveline out and, clutching her close, uses the rest of that extra movement that she got from Zephyr Strike to get out of the fucking door. Okay. So here's what happens. Here's what you see. You see uh, you make this absolutely brutal hammer attack with extra force against the one near you. You swing at it and as, as though it's just continuing the trajectory with which you swung as though it was like a baseball and not a swarm of birds. It flies back to the large quadruped bird. Mm. And then you rush over and you reach in with brute force with your fist into this very tight knot of attacking, scratching, pecking birds. And you do so with such strength that they barely even dint off of your gauntlets. You grab Aveline and pull her out. And as those birds disperse, they too rejoin the quadruped. Mm. The quadrupedal creature is now intact. There are no more swarms. It is just one giant bird. And it appears to be made of like maybe five birds tops that are just swirling. It's like if you hadn't seen it before, you wouldn't know what it was trying to be at this Mm -hmm. point. There's just not enough birds (laughs) to make the shape. And it looks horrible. But we make it out the door, right? With our extra burst of movement. Okay. So uh, we are outside. And I'll say we'll probably just go right up next to Kit, wherever Kit is. And Winsor will kind of like sag, exhausted, but free. I, for sure, as a, a free object interaction, throw my arms around your neck. And I'm just like, oh, I like being a bird. I don't like being in the bird. <laughs> yeah, I think I just, I think I unlocked a new trauma today. <sighs> yeah. Okay, Naraya, it is your turn. Amazing. Here's, wh- here's what I want to do. How close am I to Brex? Like 10 feet. Cute. So I'm going to use my movement to jump off of the cuckoo clock. I'm going to make my way to Brex. going to look at them. I'm going to say, sorry about this. Trust me, okay? And I am going to cast a third level thunder step. (gasps) Getting myself and Brex out. And because I'm an evocation wizard, I am sculpting this spell, so Esther, who is still outside, will not need to make the save. The three of wands. Cool. I love wands. The three of wands. Your character gets an opportunity in a far off land. Do they they take it? And what what is it? What's the opportunity? Yeah. I think it. I think one of my duels ends up being with someone who can teach me a bunch of shit. And I think I have been doing the thing where I think I'm no longer edgy, but I am like fucking and fighting in bars and a person who knows nothing about me, but can see the arcane shit is like, what the fuck are you doing? Come to this establishment will make you better at this. And I'm not sure if it's like strictly an academic, because I'm not a huge fan of like the bookish wizard kind of thing. I think it's more of like a training and learning environment of some sort. And you can like figure out what that is like world-wise, what makes sense. Like a mentorship. Yeah, like someone knocks me completely out in a wizard duo and is like, nice, let's make it better. And it's like across the fucking whatever continent. And uh, I have nothing better to do and it feels healthier than what I'm doing right now, so... We haven't really fleshed out this world specifically yet, so it doesn't make sense to be like, where do you go? But like, in what way is your new environment different from your old one? Cool, fun. My, and this might be weird, but my immediate, like, first instinct was that it's like warmer. I imagine- I had that too, what the fuck? In my head, I imagine like going west. And that in my head is like, just like full western, just like desert, like different. Because, like, you're, I'm, like, very Eurocentric. I was imagining, like, where we were, like, four seasons and, like, the way I'm used to, like, flora and fauna in my life. (laughs) And I think the most foreign thing I can imagine is I've never seen, like, a desert or, like, the West and, like, whatever the fuck Jesse's from. So I think I'm, like, (laughs) picturing that. Cool. And, like, dusty. I think I, like, went to, like, the cowboy wizard school of dual bullshit. Cowboy Wizard School of Dual Bullshit is a school I would love to go to. Esther, 
Esther is going to be fine. The bird, however, needs to give me a constitution saving throw of DC 16. Okay. It fails. Cool. So it's going to take 3d10 of thunder damage. I'm not even going to make you roll that because it had one HP. So tell me how you kill this bird. (laughs) Oh, wow. I, I look at Brex. I say, trust me, okay? I look out the window, literally walking away from, well, it's not explosion, but walking away from this thunderous sound which forms <laughs> around the remaining birds, not looking at them, but just looking towards the street outside because I want to rejoin most every one of the rest of my friends. And around the birds, the air just shimmers a little, and there's just this horrible thunderous sound. And Esther feels fine about it. He's not hurt by the sound at all. And then, I don't know, I don't know. I think the birds just fall limply to the ground. It's not magical at all. Yeah, you see the the remaining handful of birds fall to the ground dead, just maybe bleeding a little from their bird ear holes, but (laughs) otherwise it just kind of looks like some birds flew in here and died. It also looks like a massive rager of a party has happened. Esther, as the as the sole remaining member of the party in the house, you see absolute destruction. There is a hole in the hardwood floor. There is a hole in the plaster ceiling through which clothes have fallen. Many a furniture piece is destroyed. The side of the cuckoo clock is scorched. And that last thunder blast, which mysteriously didn't affect you at all, you were fine, broke every single glass in the cupboard and those that were out <laughs> from last night's drinking. So with that and the windows, it's just broken glass everywhere. But aside from the house and the damage to it, you are all free of this giant mega bird and you are out of initiative. Yay! Yeah. Jesus. Holy shit. We may be free, but we truly now all have bird-related trauma. Yeah. Yeah, God. Where can... Okay, so since I was outside... Could I tell where they were coming from? Or were they just, like, coming from everywhere? Like, when I made that deck save? Give me a perception check. Perception. Can I, as a reaction, give him one last, because the storm rune is still going, one last advantage on whatever he's doing? You can windswip, and I'm going to tell you why after. Okay. All right. So I get advantage? Yes. Yes. It's a nat 20. (gasps) Yes! Yes! Tell us about those birds, Megan. (laughs) All right. So what you realize when you're thinking back on it, Kit, is that, okay, yeah, there was like diminishing returns with the birds. The birds were also coming from kind of nowhere, but like a consistently spaced nowhere. And you can't really articulate what exactly is happening. It's like they just came out of nowhere, but like it it was a specific place that they all just appeared from in a circular ring around the home. And as you're hearing this, Windswip, you are able to put an analogy to this because in all of your traveling and all of your finding ancient artifacts with your mother, you actually found quite a few, um, what she explained to you were video games. Like you found your Game Boy and like you had found a few other things and you got a couple of them to work. And so you're like a little bit of a gamer just Mm -hmm. as a hobby. Yeah. I'm so sorry to have done that to you. No, I think think (laughs) that is the perfect choice. I think I was going to, one of the spells that she got would have been from a video game, honestly. Yeah, it was. So I think, what comes to your mind is that it's almost like there was like a specific spawn point for these things like around the house in a ring i see hmm. God. I have... <laughs> so 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 wait Woodswip, should, should we have should we have camped by these spawn points by any chance would that have been a good strategy <laughs> I think it's generally frowned upon, but it certainly works. Hey everyone, it's me, Megan. As usual, I'm here to bring you some announcements. The very first announcement is that we have a Discord server now, which you can join by going to questlaidplans.com slash discord or bit.ly slash questlaiddiscord. We've got a really fun little community in there. All the cast and crew are there, plus a bunch of listeners. And we've been having fun chats about sort of like backstage stuff, behind the scenes stuff, I guess is, there was no stage 
I'm just a theater person who can't think straight because it's very hot. But behind the scenes stories and uh, official character descriptions for fan art and lots and lots of stupid memes and predictions. And it there are spoiler free spaces if you're not caught up. So please come join us. Bit.ly slash quest laid discord or questladeplans.com slash discord. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash plans, and we are going to be putting up the Mega Bird stat block at some point in the next like 24 hours. We just want to give people a chance to like listen to the episode before we put it out into the world, but uh, it is just a really, really fun encounter to run, I can say, from experience, and you would have to ask the cast whether they found it fun or infuriating to play as players but uh you know little little of column a little of column b if you want that in your game it's going to be on patreon.com forward slash quest laid plans and in like a week ish we're going to have another episode up there of pitch a bitch our bonus show and it's going to have jamie as a guest so that's going to be really fun um, if you want to do us a small favor for free, you can rate us five stars on your podcast app of choice and or leave a nice review. Tell your friends on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Quest Laid Plans. And uh, yeah, honestly, that's about it. Uh, we have one like programming note, which is that we in this next little section of the game, actually, prior to going into it, we also leveled up two more levels again but we decided to cut that audio because it was really long and boring and ultimately nobody got any features or anything that were like super exciting or consequential to the game so if we reference that it's because we just leveled up two levels but we don't do it like on air the way we did last time um so yeah we just thought it would be more exciting to just get right back into it so without further ado let's get right back into it and we will see you next time thank you for listening So we are going to pick up exactly where you left off, which is outside of Tefan's wrecked house. I believe who's still inside Esther. Everybody else was outside. The first thing I'm going to tell you guys is I'm going to give you a little present. Okay, actually, no, I'm going to give you a couple presents. The first thing I want to do is giving Jamie inspiration for that polymorph that didn't quite work out, but if it had, would have been really dangerous. Um, So Jamie, take a point of inspiration. Thank you. And I'm also going to give Phil a point of inspiration because it was his birthday this week. And when Ooh. I DM games, I give out inspiration as birthday presents. Thank you. Oh, yay. Uh, so you two have inspiration. And the final present I will give to you guys is a little less pleasant. It is for everyone. And it is information. But it is maybe not information you'll like. So <laughs> I will tell you what your characters might suspect. But what I will tell you as people, as players, is true. You may take a short rest now. You should know that if you do that, the the time that you spend on that will have ramifications. Fuck. Okay. Right. All right. It's my favorite kind of present. Wow. I okay. love everybody leveled up as well. And I would love to hear like what all the changes were and stuff. But I just wanted to let you know now that like if you were to choose not to rest, um, you would still get all those benefits, just not like restoring HP. Right. Cool. Or spells lots or whatever else. Mm-hmm. Key points, etc. Yeah, exactly. Sorry for the monk erasure. Yeah, I think like <laughs> obviously this is true in D anD D, but in general, in a more mechanical, concrete sense, from here on out, all your actions have consequences further down the line. Even if I can't tell you what they are right now. Terrifying. Well, um, the only thing that Winsip is lacking is HP, but it is a lot of it. So yeah, I'll leave that up to those with healing resources, whether they want to spend it on her or if we should gamble with the rest. There's like a couple I can do. I can. I haven't done my second wind yet, but that's just a little bit. But she's like ready to fall apart right now. So. <laughs> yeah, I think too, if you don't short rest, then your like pain dice will shrink as well. Oh, shit. Ooh. Well, um, we could also s- split up. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. We can put Winswip back inside to rest, and just go and investigate the where the more birds are coming from. Yeah, Esther is pretty okay, so I'm, I'm ready to go. I would say that Kit could definitely use a short rest just to regenerate key, just because that's that makes him very like a lot more useful if we didn't want to leave Winswip alone but Winswip you you were under that condition that stopped you from being able to regain hit points right 
all of that dissipated when the bird died. It was just until the bird's next turn, and now that it's dead, it's... Thank fucking God. I could cast a second level cure wounds. It's up to you. I mean, I, I'm kind of deferring to the group here. I can have one swoop limp along for sure, but... Mm, but you were at like four HP. I don't yes. feel great about correct. that. Correct. <laughs> um... That is correct. Yeah, so it's like, it's a question of whether we want to like pool all of our, what we're comfortable with healing resources into her right now, or yeah, she could sit this little adventure out and try to catch up later. Um, I'm making the executive decision of casting a a second level cure wounds, so have thirteen HP back. Okay. If I get healed thirteen, that brings me up to seventeen. And then I'm at nineteen, so we're together at the not super fun end of things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still think we should. I mean, if like half of us, more than half of us, are not doing great, maybe we should take the bullet and just fucking rest for an hour i know we just woke up but it's been a wild 10 minutes <laughs> where do you think you want to go wherever the fuck the birds came from yesterday i was i was willing to think that you know it was just wrong place wrong time they came to our house like yeah. someone's doing this i mean i think our only lead is is porla mm. um so i think you know if if you or if we are to go anywhere, it would be to try to find where she went. Yeah. Do we have a sense for the spawn, like where the birds were spawning? Like, could we get outside of that circle? Do we have a sense for like where it kind of ends? Yeah, I think that having seen where they're coming from, you could relate it to like, you know, there weren't birds past that tree over there and then, like, kind of work out where outside of that circle would be. Yeah. Maybe we could go somewhere that feels a little safer and then take a short rest. I think that's probably a good idea. I literally don't know what's safer than here. I know, but we don't know if here is safe. Yeah. Yeah. They might come back. I mean, if this is where they came from, yeah. maybe it stopped for now, but it might come back in a couple minutes. We don't know. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah, I, I think... I think we should be at least on the move now and maybe a better opportunity to uh, take a short rest or, you know, take a take a little break will present itself. But I think out here we're just kind of out of the open. Yeah. Can I can I just ask someone to um, um, pull me along a little bit on our way? Um, and what she means by that is that sometimes she would cast levitate and <laughs> um, have someone just kind of tie a rope to her to her foot or something and just pull her along Amazing. for as long as that spell lasts. Only oh, a little balloon woman. <laughs> I am also going to have you roll your pain dice because yeah. you just finished a battle. Okay. Do I still get a, 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 a d20 or... or uh... I think if you skip the short... Are you skipping the short rest? I guess currently I am, yeah. Yeah, so then I think it would go down to a 12, a 12. is the next plus one. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I can Let's use see. my um, my antler necklace and Eight. and be elk again, and Windswip could ride on elk Aveline. Oh, that would that would be nice. Eight out of twelve will do it, so uh, you are okay for the moment. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, uh, yeah she nods to Aveline. Thank you so much, and thanks for the heals too. I'll I'll be okay. I wanted to heal you during the battle, but I couldn't. Because of oh, the... yeah, that was really, that was really fucked yeah. up on that bird's part. I hated that. I didn't like it. But nothing against you. I'm just glad that we got out of there. Yeah. What were you going to say, Kit? No, I'm just thinking we obviously need to get out of here. We're not exactly sure where to go. Um, We could either try to find Porla or the other thing that Winswip and I noticed when we were looking at our stuff last night was about this, about Lasper, where where Porla was going to school and how there's more magical energy there and, and whether we should just be heading in that direction generally with the thought that maybe that's where she's going to end up going to. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing out whether we want to sort of confront her here at the university or keep on going somewhere else. How far away is uh, Lasper to here? Um, Lasper is... Like, it depends on how you wanted to travel, to be honest with you, but it would be, like, at least a day regardless. It's not, like, super close. Yeah, that seems like a pretty big commitment. 
Uh, maybe there's more we can find out here then. Or we go find this Krugnail guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I don't think he... I mean, he's either not the very nice person I thought he was, or or he's being implicated in this, which would be shitty, because he's just... Yeah, well, I found I, I found his ID on Porla's desk, so I think I think she took it. She used it, right? Yeah, or he I mean, gave that's... it to her. Oh, yeah, Wait, I guess. Does, does Porla have... Do, do you remember if Porla had any shape-changing or disguise magic back when we knew her? She's a cleric, so not really. Okay, yeah, I. that's... It's... Mm, okay. I mean, there's always potions and stuff. We can't rule it out. And I mean, we've all changed quite a lot in the last ten years. We don't know what <laughs> she might be capable of now. Yeah. She could have picked up some new tricks. Drew, I've gotten a lot hotter, <laughs> says Brax. <laughs> I, I high-five them. You smell, you smell really good. Yeah, you didn't think it was possible for me to glow up, glow up, glow up. How do you say that? Glow up. But, uh, but I did. <laughs> just keep trying. You'll get there. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just weird because we, we saw him, but his eye, you never see, you got to carry your ID everywhere, right? Why, why else would it have been in his, in Portla's office and not on him? We have not seen both of them at the same time. That's right. I, maybe it's too much speculation. I, I, I really don't know. I do think we should take, take a pass around the campus and see if we can find Porla. Or maybe we should just go to this fence and see if there's any evidence. I I think we should travel around here, though, for starters. Yeah. yeah. All right. So where would you guys like to go? Before we go anywhere, I would like to... I understand that there is several broken windows, but I'm very much locking this house up. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> the windows, I can't do shit about them because I don't have mending or anything, but I'm just going to, like, close the front door and, like, lock it I up. I feel that because if anybody is willing to crawl through, like, dangerous, jagged glass, broken windows, like, you know, I mean, maybe they deserve to get in the house. <laughs> she knows the windows are broken, right? <laughs> just just let her do it. Just let her do it. Okay, I'm good to go. Oh, I was going to say, I, I didn't stock mending today, otherwise I would be going around and fixing up the windows. That's... Honestly, probably not the first time this house has been like this. Yeah, I'm sure that Tafan has thrown many a rager. I think, uh, yeah, Brex is God, like, oh, so yeah, cool. last year after a Battle of the Banes, it was like, this is nothing compared to that. That was a fucking rager. <laughs> the scar scene um, goes hard, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know who you got to watch out for is the Kledma band. They don't fuck around. Wow, clarinets are just too intense. Oh, yeah, and they make great weapons. Okay, we Should have we go? to go Should somewhere. Should we go somewhere? <laughs> yeah, let's go. So y'all make your way to, uh, did you say you wanted to go to the fence? Or, sorry, I don't know if you said where you wanted to go. I don't think let's we did. Let's go to the yeah. fucking fence. I think the fence, I think we've been meaning yeah. to go to the fence for a while. Yeah, so I think like, we should yeah, just cross that time. off, get that yeah. off our list just quickly, you know, see what's up with the fence. Yeah. Crash cut to us dying at the fence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh ah. no, this fence is alive! <laughs> You all walk through town for the first time together, I think, because you all made your way back to the house separately. So obviously the mood is heavy and everyone's exhausted and kind of wounded from this bird fight. But you're also walking through this town that the five of you have spent a lot of time together back in the day and you find yourselves kind of flooded with memories and really taken by, oh, that place we used to hang out at all the time is now something else, but that place is still the same. And as you as you sort of like walk down memory lane physically and literally, <laughs> uh, you Is the road cold back. memory lane? <laughs> yeah, it actually is. Um, <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Tafan lives on 69 <laughs> memory lane. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> and so as you make your way, you have to, and it's kind of a main road. So you have to kind of make your way down it to get there. It's all very on the nose. And then it's, and then you take a left on a heavy handed metaphor street <laughs> to get to the guilds. So <laughs> I love, love to live at, all of this um, is love to live at yeah. 69 memory lane and the intersection of 420 heavy handed metaphor street. <laughs> okay. But like, you have to understand that I live in Providence and like, we literally have things that are like at the intersection of hope and power. Cause like, that's how our yep, streets yep, are. Yep, yep, yep. So like, mm -hmm. this is just me living my authentic truth. So uh, <laughs> you all make your way back to campus. And as you go in, it is pretty empty still. It does. It's not completely deserted. So you're able to figure out that 
probably whatever evacuation was happening is called off. And it's not difficult to figure out what part of the fence was down, because even from just the entrance to the guild, you're able to see up the hill a section of what is normally a pretty innocuous fence is surrounded by these like orange cones and scaffolding and pylons and all the telltale signs of construction danger do not go here as they are being rebuilt by a frenzied group of groundspeople. What was what material was the fence is the fence made of? Like what kind of fence are we talking? So it's it doesn't actually look like a fence to the naked eye if you didn't know what it was. It's a series of stakes in the ground that don't have anything between them that would prevent you from like walking through it. It is more of a sonic thing that shoots down into the ground and and sort of emits a frequency that would repel. So it's um, like a sonic force field. Yeah, exactly. Or like isn't that kind of what electric fences are for dogs sort of? I was going to say like the invisible fences for dogs except going into the Right, ground, yeah. As exactly. To, uh, and just so that I get the picture, that fence is, like marks the edge of the campus. Correct, yeah. And so it's not that there's nothing past it, but it's sort of rough terrain. It's not like landscaped nicely uh, to indicate this is a place where people are. It's, you know, rocks and it's not it's I will say it's difficult terrain both like in terms of the game and just sort of uh flavor-wise. You you also see the signs of a big festival winding down. And if if you didn't know what had happened toward the back of campus yesterday, you would think it was just sort of the day after. There's cupcake wrappers on the ground and people taking tent stakes out and the typical just day after where everything that was magical last night seems kind of sad and deflated. Do any of y'all remember this being here when we were here? I, I have no memory of this, this of, fence. Of the, the fence? fence? No. Megan, was the fence here 10 years ago? Yeah. The fence, like, predates all of you. It was, like, when, if any if any of you is, is like, oh, God, I don't want to reference Harry Potter, but, like, if any of you is, like, the nerd who read the history of the school, and not, it's not a school, but you know what I mean, like, the history of the guild, it, would any of you have done that? Like, would any of you, you think, have cared to, like, really read up on the history of the guilds? I think Aveline might Honestly, have. no. I think Kit, no. I think Kit would have. Yeah, I think Winstop would have dipped her toe in. Yeah. So those of you for whom you think it's in character to have like paid attention in the pamphlets that you saw in the in the lobby, you would know that it's been up basically since the guild was constructed. And the guild is one of the oldest buildings. Well, give me a history check. All of you who think you would have done that, give me a history check as as Esther asks this of you. All right. Twenty two. Twelve. <laughs> Dirty twenty. Okay, so first of all, before I get there, I also want to say that Naraya, despite not really having paid attention, you worked in campus ops, and so you would know that it was definitely there when you were there, because a fair amount of your job involved, like... Grounds. I just don't... I, I don't think I cared about, like, why as much as, like, making sure it is stays up. Exactly. Like, you never would have dealt with any, like, a breach in the fence like this, because it's pretty stalwart, but um, if there was ever, like a threat or like you know like an electric storm where it seemed like that might compromise it it was always like defcon 5 let's make sure that doesn't happen and that was that would mm -hmm. fall to you to you know make the calls okay so who got a dirty 20 me winswip you remember from being very overexcited about um starting at this prestigious guild uh and doing all your homework on it that not only does the fence go back to the beginning of this history of this guild, but that the guild is actually one of the oldest buildings that anybody, as far as anybody can tell, in this region since the Great Waking. It was perhaps one of the first ones built, and that this is actually sort of a historical site because according to legend, and there's lots of different legends, but there, according to legend, it was somehow significant in the actual act of this, like, resurrection, the Great Waking. There's lots of different stories. You know, some said that, like, the Pention put a great silver flame here to like sustain and keep warm the survivors. Others say that one of the Pention, and of course everybody thinks it's their own God, was like somehow born here, but it's it's considered sort of a special holy place in kind of varying ways to many people. And that's also why it was a uh, construction wise kind of just gives old building. Cool. Kit rolled a 22 to see no even more than that. I'm sorry that I missed you rolled a 22. Uh, you, you know all that as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I missed that. I thought there was also like there was no, like I th I extra. Thought there was like, yeah, I thought maybe the DC was a 21 or something, and I got like yeah. a little bit. 
<laughs> you had to roll <laughs> below a 21 no, to understand what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's true you're, you're okay. so smart that you actually have too much information in your brain and you forgot <laughs> oh too real too real whoa <laughs> sorry i accidentally made Not it depressing it. and real so anyway yeah. sorry that's what that is that's what well, this okay. show is all about yeah no um it's been here esther yeah it's been uh it's been here for a while actually um i don't know if it's ever been broken though that's I yeah That's I don't new. remember ever reading anything about it being broken. It's I mean Esther didn't they didn't they warn you about the Remorazes and, no. and how I mean oh, yes okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't okay. listening. I, you, yeah you, yeah that tracks. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> no, I, I was, wow we had very different experiences. I think. Yeah really. So um, as you all make your way up to the fence, uh, you see even closer a group of people who are dressed similarly to primo what how primo was yesterday um sort of fussing and conferring and some people are casting spells on the various um, sort of like metal stakes in the ground and others are working on uh, putting up actual literal fencing to keep people away from the area until it's completed we should ask somebody how this physically could happen and how they're repairing it because i I have a nasty feeling that it's not just a matter of pulling a couple of stakes out of the ground. Yeah, uh, Naraya, do, do you see Primo down there? Do I see Primo down there? Uh, give me a perception check. That's a 27. Yeah, you spot him right away. He's unmistakable. I mean, he was your boss. You know his weird way of walking <laughs> and the, the dumb hat he wears. <laughs> I just, like, tilt my chin to, like, point towards him. Do we do we think we should talk to him? I mean, I know we just discussed that he might be involved with this or implicated. I don't know. But he knows more than anyone. He knows yeah, I mean, the grounds he, better than everyone. I, I guess I asked you because you know you you know him the best. I think out of all of us, and you know, I I don't think it would be odd for you to ask him stuff. Maybe. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Or we could have. I mean. Esther, you seem very charismatic <laughs> today. A little more so than you were before. Maybe you could, like, uh, play stupid. Noticing, <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she... <laughs> anyway, um, that throws her off a little bit. Um, <laughs> just maybe you could um, play stupid and act like you don't know anything about this fence and maybe try to get some just basic information out of him about it. Um, I mean, we can all go. He already saw us. That's true. Yeah. We can all go and just let Esther ask the easy questions, and then if... Don't like the way you said <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, ju I'm just supporting Winswip's plan, which is you s pretend to not know anything, mm -hmm. as opposed to you actually not knowing anything. Mm -hmm. And we see if I need to intervene. And wait, the, the other thing... Which, we saw him yesterday, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. We, I didn't. Oh, yeah, you, you guys were over. Yeah. Everyone except for, yeah, everyone except for Aveline and Winswit had that conversation with him. Okay, and last thing, do, do the groundskeepers normally keep their IDs, like, visible, like, on a, like, lanyard or something like that? I think that the visibility depends, and that it's, like, a personal preference thing, so you've seen a lot of faculty and staff in general with their IDs on lanyards just for accessibility, but it's not, like, required. Got but it. would he need it to, like, get places? Is it, like, a key card? It's a key card, yeah. Okay. Maybe hmm. I find... Maybe we find a way to... Let's go ask about the fence, and yeah. then... We'll and then maybe we ask about his ID as well if we get there. Love it. Okay. I kind of start charging forward. Take Hester, like, <laughs> under my arm. <laughs> arm in arm. And start leading everyone towards Primo. Sure, you guys make your way across this sort of, you know, like shortcuts through here, through winding through the buildings and everything, and you're able to get there in a way that wouldn't really occur to outsiders, but you know is the way. Between a couple of buildings, the mess hall and the, uh, the gym. And you make your way over and you are immediately greeted by um, a woman who is nailing a actual tarp fence into the ground. Oh, hey, guys. Um, wow. Uh, nice nice to see you. My gosh. Um, to what do we owe the honor? Look, we just have to talk to Primo. 
about some stuff. Yeah, we were just hoping to uh, ha- have a quick chat and, and sort of figure out ha- ha- what, how this happened, what's going on. Maybe if there's a way that we can help. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. Yeah, you see this this elf woman like uh, just sort of blush and be like, um, I'm not really supposed to let anybody in. But um, I mean, look, between between us, you're probably more capable of dealing with anything dangerous than even I am. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I'll go. I'll go get Primo. I guess. Thank Primo. you. Okay. Bye. And then she, you see Great. her go off and, and grab Primo and talk to him a little sheepishly. And, and he sort of grumpily is like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, comes over to the uh, the area of this, like, barricade. Well, so far, this is going great. I thought I told you kids to, uh, you know, stay clear. We have questions. Do you have a second? Yeah. Um, sure. Hold on. Um. L- Larry, Larry, and you see this dwarf be like, yeah, what's up, Crugnail? <laughs> and he's like, Larry, can you and Loretta just sort of keep an eye on, um, you know, operations here? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go and talk to these kids. And, and you see Larry be like, kids, those are the fucking heroes of the, of the century, but okay, I mean, if you want to... <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Yeah, you got it. I'm a big <laughs> fan. Maybe you could, uh, like, write a, my, you know, it's my kid's birthday tomorrow. Maybe you could, uh, like, write a card or something. We'll talk later. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> you see you see him sort of, like, yell instructions to everybody else as, as Krugnail kind of hops the fence and uh, says, like, yeah, what do you kids need? Well, Esther? Uh, yeah, Mr. Krugnail, so what are, how are you uh, re- building the fence like how are how are you repairing this well i'm not great at magic uh but the those of us on this on my team who are actually better at spell casting than me are doing this complicated this is like a complicated long ritual spell to get it back up and it you know it takes a while but then once it's up it's it's pretty up you know it's pretty foolproof theoretically right the rest of us are just trying to make sure people don't go near it while they're doing it because they can't be interrupted right and so what does um up actually mean uh how how does this thing you know how is it protecting us uh well that's a good question uh esta it's uh thanks it's it's actually you know we say up but it's down you know it goes down into the ground and it sends sort of like magical unpleasant sound waves you know like nails on a chalkboard or like somebody like eating a potato chip in your ear sort of thing hate that absolutely hate it yeah it keeps the remorazes away they don't like sounds or something i don't know so do you have any sense of how this this accident could have happened like is it do you think it's just like one of these remorants hit it strong enough or, or or where look um you kids are well for lack of a better word you kind of hot shits around here okay so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be straight with you it's uh this is classified information but it came down from the inside nobody can take it down from the outside i there's a handful of us who and what you know it wasn't me but there's a handful of us who have access to take down the fence if for whatever reason we ever needed to which we wouldn't and how many people have that access and why when would you need it to be down i mean you wouldn't other than like i guess theoretically the the answer would be like if you ever needed to to not have any magic for some reason like to go dark but we've never run into that so i think when people i think when it was originally built it was just like Magic was fairly new and people were a little suspicious. So they wanted to do like a fail safe in case they ever needed to like not have any magic. But again, like it really hasn't come up. I mean, this this place is old as shit and the fence has been fence has been here. So this is kind of fucking crazy. And not a lot of people had the IDs. I mean, it's like heads of departments and like, you know, Kyralius and Willa who are fucking food now for these worms, unfortunately. When you say have no magic, you mean like blocking the use of magic in campus or what does that mean i mean the fence itself is magic right yeah like the fence is made of magic and so like in case there was ever i mean i don't really understand it i'm not really a magic guy when i asked they said it was kind of an antiquated thing back when they were first figuring out magic there were people who were like what if magic turns on us and makes us and decides to like kill us all like robots or something you know so there was always like the kill switch for that but nobody's ever used it because magic ended up being awesome right yeah magic is awesome magic is awesome primo i i'm so i'm sorry i have to ask this i'm just gonna give windswip like a look and like do like a little subtle sign of like id because i'm about to ask him about 
She kind of uh, just shrugs and motions, go for it. But there is a little bit of panic in her eyes because this makes her nervous. Primo, have you been working with Orla a lot recently? We're kind of blown away oh, by... Oh, Orla! Um, yeah, yeah, yeah! By, but, you know, she was like such a part of our group. Oh my god, yeah, she was one of you guys. She was one of you guys. Where is she? She's such like a badass now. She was so excited well, for this and like so excited to see you all. And I was just so like, she's just talking about it all the time. And I thought she would be with you guys. But I guess she's got a lot of responsibility now that this whole thing's happened, huh? What a she nice does. kid. But is she effectively your boss or are you like on, where does she, where is she lining up in order of operations with you now? Well, that's the fucking question of the hour, isn't it? Because we don't know. I mean, she wasn't my boss before, but like, who's anyone's boss anymore? Because the two the head of the guild and his assistant head of the guild and now, you know, like I said, fucking worm food. And so I don't know. But I mean, I will say I think Paula would make a really good head of the guild. I think she's really smart. I think she's really nice. She's very generous with her time and her gifts. And I think uh, she's been a really good presence for this for this guild. I think that she's the future. If I have any say, I would vote for her. Wow. That's quite a big speech, a, a bit a bit of praise for her. So you haven't have you two been working together recently? Our work doesn't cross that much, uh, but I will say, like, she, despite not really, like, having to work with me, has been, like I said, really generous with her time. Because, you know, I mean, you know Paula. She's a really gifted healer, and I've, you know, had my health troubles, and, you know, it's it's the kind of thing that just sort of comes back every now and then. And she's really, she's she found out that I wasn't feeling well, and she was really, really generous with her time using her magic to, to we had these, like, sessions where she would sort of do her healing, and I would feel really good for, like, a week, you know? So we just did it, like, every week. She was really nice about it, you know? Can I make hmm. something like a perception check, an arcana check, an insight check? Insight. I would like to arcana this man. Sure. Can I can I give Naraya the help action? Or actually, can I just give you a guidance? I just turn and like give Aveline and Winsworth just like the most panic look while Esther is. And I just like touch out. you on the shoulder in like a reassuring way and give you the guidance. Can I see? Can I arcana check this man? Yeah, what exactly are you checking? I, I, it sounds suspicious to me that yeah. she was doing like, magic. Like, why would to she him be healing a lot him recently? A bunch. I mean, maybe it's a good thing, but maybe there's like some other weird magic stuff going on. So here's my quandary. I will definitely let you make an arcana check. It sounds to me like what you actually want to do is detect magic. I will do both. Okay. I would like to first arcana check him for like residue, and I will also cast detect magic i would like to do both and hopefully stack their results sure 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 yeah why don't you do that cool i'm using my spell slot for my detect magic i'm casting it as the action not bothering with ritual that's a three on the guidance and a 15 on my dice which is 18 plus <laughs> 8 26 on arcana arcana 26 arcana plus detect magic just frantically looking at this man while esther is still questioning him because it takes a second for you to detect magic right okay so here's what i'll tell you i'll start with detect magic you do not detect magic active on this man okay that also would tell me if he's poor in this guy's self or some shit right no there's no magic on this man he's cool. not a magic man in the words of not heart <laughs> They, <laughs> then the 20, what is it, like a 26, 26. 28 on your arcana? 26. I'm going to say that residue of magic is such a tricky thing to detect on anybody. But if you're, if you know exactly what you're looking for, it's not impossible. And I think with a roll that high, you're able to tell that this is a person who has had like healing magic done on them quite a lot. And also that... Because you remember when you spoke to him last night, he had like that weird moment where his memory was like a little like he didn't recognize you for a second or something. Mm. And knowing that the pieces click into place and you remember to sort of look and just check on his cognitive state. And you see that he is indeed a little bit compromised in terms of like memory. And it's not part of his illness. It's like magical in nature magic amnesia oh no uh okay. i as i understand all of that i'm still like arm in arm with esther i'm just gonna let go and give him like a little tap and be like you should ask more questions about the fence and then i'm gonna motion for everyone else 
to step aside so I can tell them everything. Yeah, you know, actually, Cargnell, we, like, in this sort of chaos, we're just trying to help out as best we can and, and you know, speak to, to and make sure that we can check in with everyone. But we're having trouble getting into some areas right now. Do you know anything about, like, I don't know, like, access cards or, like, key or something that can, like, help us get into these other spaces? Yeah, well, where do you need to get in? And you see him kind of start to, like, pat himself down, like, he's trying to get his card. And he's like, yeah, ho- yeah hold on. Uh, yeah, where are you trying to get in? Um, wh- honestly, <laughs> there's, like, just a lot of areas that seem restricted to us right now, like, just main offices, uh, just checking in with the different faculty that's still here. Yeah, uh, you know what, hold on a sec. And then he, like, unzips his jacket and starts checking inner pockets kind of more and more frantically. Are you okay? Yeah, 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 hold on. I, uh, I must have left my ID in my office or something. Um, yeah, sorry, I'll oh. get it, I'll get it, though, and we can, we can get you kids in wherever you need. That's weird, I always okay. keep it on me, but, you know, it's a weird night. Winsworth, did you take his ID from Paula's office last night? No, I didn't. I didn't take anything. I was I was trying really hard to leave it as it was so that no one knew I was messing around in there. I assume Naraya has like whispered or is I've like to... frantically just hissed all of this to y'all. Oh, I think she must have used those sessions to steal that card from him and and maybe some other stuff that she didn't want him to know about. I I look at everybody and I I walk back with, to where Esther and um, Primo are talking and uh, Primo, I, just just a quick question. Um, do you know where Porla is right now? Like when when was the last time you uh, you talked with her? We we haven't seen her in a while and you know it'd be nice to catch up with her too. Yeah, she's been all over the place. I uh, I mean she's definitely probably either in her office or like maybe Kyrelius's office if she's trying to go through his things and figure out you know what to do next. I guess. But yeah, I would say I would say definitely check in those offices first. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go. I gotta go back to my office uh, and try and uh, grab something. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, th- thank you so much for speaking. And you know, maybe we can uh, meet up in a little bit and see if we can help you out more. And maybe you can uh, help us with those um, access cards as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kids are so sweet. Yeah, I'll get you guys back in in, in a minute. We'll meet back up. Go have like a go have a soda or something. I don't know. All right. Thanks, Craig Nail. I've always liked you. <laughs> Knowing who you were. <laughs> so, um, have we all gathered? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess if Primo has sort of gone off in the direction of the operations building, then then you guys are free to gather. Okay. We have to find Porla. Yeah, we have, have to, to find, find Por. She's been fucking with his brain. Are we sure about that? I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt because I was hoping. We were misreading the situation. It wasn't her, but his brain is bad and it's not because he's sick.